And now, if you'll join us as we honor the legacy of our founding pastor, Pastor Tom Whitten. When Pastor Tom was 12 years old, he was behind the church that his father had planted in Gastonia, and he was playing in the creek. He was wading and catching crawfish, and it was there that he had a vision from the Lord. God told him that he would pastor a church, and God showed him the property that the church would be on. He told him that it would be the largest church in the county, and that one day it would be a church of 10,000. Since planting the church and pastoring for over 40 years, Pastor Tom has walked out that vision by faith. He understood that faith is the key to unlocking vision, that the combination of vision and faith resulted in continual God-inspired creativity and innovation. Things like starting a church in a theater when it was a sin to go to a theater, hiring a female pastor on staff when no one was doing that, hiring a youth pastor, creating dimmable lights for theatrical productions before any church thought about having dimmable lights beginning a daycare, Christian school, living center, crisis center, and more. By faith, Pastor Tom walked through open doors and was continually developing new wineskins to accommodate new ministry to reach new people. Today, we continue to ask God to give us big vision, big dreams, and the faith to walk through the open doors that He provides. I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way, and I And I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way. And I believe I'll see you do it again. I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe. I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way. And I believe I'll see you do it again. Pastor Tom was a man of prayer, and he believed in the power of prayer. When he came to Concord, he knew that God's promise was that God would build his church and that to take a city, you first have to win that battle in prayer. So Pastor Tom and Betty would get into the car and drive around the city and pray. They were intentional about going to every neighborhood. They went to the poor sections and the rich sections and as well as the neighborhoods of all different races. They, they prayed that God would build a diverse church with the people of all education levels, income levels, and of all colors. When the church was first started, they held prayer revivals where they met every night to pray specifically for revival. Later, Pastor Tom would begin 6 a.m. Monday morning prayer. Along with Pastor Phil Bennett, we began Watchman Prayer Wall Ministry. That ministry has seen us operate in a covering of 24-7 prayer for over 20 years. Today, with the prayer place, Watchman Walls, 21 Days of Prayer, and much more, we continue to be a church who understands that when we work, we work, but when we pray, God works.
Several years ago, Jess and I had rented a small home a couple blocks off of Main Street in downtown Concord. One Saturday morning, I got up early and began the work of mowing my yard. Two rows in, the lawnmower died. My neighbor, who was also working on his yard, motioned me over and quickly offered me his mower. Like a good neighbor should, we began the process of introducing ourselves. When we got to the part about work, I mentioned that I was a youth pastor at what was then CFA Church. He stopped for a moment to think. He was connecting CFA Church with First Assembly, and First Assembly with Pastor Tom. He said, Pastor Tom's church? Pastor Tom was my pastor. He went on to tell me how Pastor Tom would park his truck at the end of the street, and every Saturday, he would walk door to door asking people if they needed prayer. These weekly prayer visits became somewhat of a highlight for my neighbor. They would sit on the porch and talk. The next time I saw Pastor Tom, I had to tell him about our interactions with my neighbor. He responded the way most of you know he would. John, I didn't know what else to do. I would just park my car, knock on doors, and pray. I found out that he had did this for years in almost every neighborhood of Concord. Rich, poor, black, white, it didn't matter. The world needed the love of Jesus, and Pastor Tom would bring it to them door by door. Today, Multiply Church understands that people are God's passion, and we will do anything to bring them Jesus. Come awaken your people, come awaken the city, oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out, every stronghold will crumble, I hear the chains hit the ground, oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Come awake in the people, come awake in the city, oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out, every stronghold will crumble, I hear the chains hit the ground, oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. One of the first things that Pastor Tom did with the young congregation was to have a service emphasizing global missions. The first missions week featured a missionary from Africa, Brother Cheney. The church began financially supporting missions and never looked back. Remember, this was all while Pastor Tom was still believing by faith for even his own salary, and the church also had a brand new mortgage to consider. But Pastor Tom knew that God's heart was for the lost, not only in our city, but around the world. He understood the power of generosity and planting seeds in the things that God cares about. Today, the Multiply family supports over a hundred missionaries and is able to give over a million dollars a year to missions. There is no doubt that we are blessed today because of our legacy of a global vision and generosity. And we can't wait to continue that legacy and dream about the future global impact of the Multiply family. We know our world needs Jesus. And we know that our world needs freedom. So give us eyes to see the hurting and the broken. Let our lives align with every word you say. Cause we know our world needs Jesus. And we know our world needs freedom. So give us eyes to see the hurting and the broken. And let our When young Tom Whidden was a student at Southeastern Bible College, he was attending an evening service of a week-long revival. When the speaker gave the altar call, Tom responded, but because of the crowd, the only room he could find was underneath a grand piano. He crawled underneath that piano and prayed, 
God, I will go anywhere you want me to go. He sensed in his heart that God wanted him to go to Africa. The problem was Tom didn't want to go to Africa. He wrestled a bit in prayer, but he said yes. The next night at the service, Pastor Tom again found his spot underneath that same grand piano. It was there that God spoke to him. I don't want you to go to Africa. I just wanted you to be willing to go to Africa. I want you to go to Concord and plant a church. And again, Pastor Tom said yes. Not too long after that, Pastor Tom and Betty Whidden pulled their 17-foot camper into Concord and by faith planted a church. Their first service was held in the Pastime Theater with 32 people in attendance. Since then, First Assembly, CFA, and now Multiply Church has grown to six locations with thousands of people, a Christian school, an extension site of Southeastern University, a Dream Center, and so much more. And today, the Multiply family will always be based on people who say yes to whatever God is asking them to do. You can use anything, Lord, you can use me. You can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart.
had the testimony of the great man of God, the founder of the house, Tom Whitten. So much will be said this afternoon. So much will bring clarity to why we're here and why you're here. Just think 63 years ago, he climbed out from behind a piano, heard the call of God. Are your ears attentive to the call of God this morning? Are you ready to receive a new assignment from the king? I took this picture when I was supposed to be praying. It was an early morning prayer meeting here. And in the picture is our founding pastor. 21 days of prayer just before COVID hit. Still praying. Still believing. Still trusting. When I get big, when I grow up, I want to have that kind of testimony. How about you? <laughs> Father, might we be available today for a touch from you? We're going to celebrate a great hero to faith this afternoon. And prayerfully today, Father, we will receive a realignment yes. with you and a new assignment for you. And God, would you do a mighty work in your midst today? And we'll give you the glory for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody believes that said? Amen. amen and amen. Give someone some knuckles, a high five, a wave, and you can be seated. Well, God bless you. It's so good to see you. Um, I'm the recipient of this call. You know, 58, 1958, the church started, but then just around the corner, in August of 1970. 50 years ago to daycare in August of 76. 45 years to school. And God has given me the opportunity to steer that ship for the sake of the gospel. Frankie Canador wouldn't be in Concord if it wasn't for Tom Whitten. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Tom Whitten. May God bless us today. As we think about an assignment, a couple weeks ago I came, I want you to know that, I'm sorry to admit this, but I use lavender essential oils. I'm not proud of it. See, the first time I heard about essential oils, I was in either Whole Foods or that other place. What's it called, Kristen? Huh? Earth Fair, same thing. You know, you go to Earth Fair, you start off on one side of the store, you buy bananas. By the time you get to the other side, the bananas are rotten. I mean, it's just... <laughs> All I wanted is some real milk, non-organic. I was looking for some white bread. <laughs> Miracle Whip and Skippy peanut butter. And the first time I heard of essential oils, some stoner popped out from the aisle. <laughs> Would you like some essential oils? I said, no, can you point me to the white bread? I mean, <laughs> and now I use them. This one keeps my vertigo in my balance. The reason I brought it today is because the other day when I came in here and saw this light show, I said, honey, did you bring the oil? She said, no. I said, could you just lean on me, please? The room is spinning. So. Just in case. It was a short while ago when we were walking through the 21 days of prayer that I had a shot to, to get a, a snap and share on day 19, a short devotional that was entitled Leading Others to Freedom. It's because you see, people, isn't that what it's all about? Someone led you to freedom. Just maybe you said, right, what do you mean freedom, Canador? Well, just maybe someone led you here because they led you here because they want you to find freedom. And in that devotional, we were studying Exodus. 
And the verses that were being unpacked were those verses in the 12th chapter of Exodus. The story of the Passover, the annual remembrance of, of how deliverance to the Hebrews from Egypt took place. And there's a verse tucked out in there that said many other people went up with them. Now, just like anything, because I've got a mini iPad and I've got the Bible app, I'm checking out all the translations of what it says. And one translation, the Living Bible, puts it this way. People of various sorts. (laughs) People of various sorts. Look around. That's us. Others say it's a mixed multitude, a mixed crowd. Many diverse people followed because they wanted freedom. I want to share with you this morning a message entitled A Squared. And it's simply built around this premise that proper alignment positions us for divine assignments. I want to say that again. Proper alignment positions us for divine assignments. And then I'm going to attach another A at the end. And we're going to have our pastor come up. And it says, with the anointing of God. Do you realize there are people that are starved for freedom today? Can we just reflect for a moment on how we have been set free? We just experienced the Easter message. Good Friday and Easter. When I was a heathen kid, I went to church on Good Friday and Easter. I even went for Ash Wednesday. Remember those days? And if I didn't make it to Ash Wednesday, I grabbed my buddy Pauly and rubbed his forehead on mine. (laughs) The world, your neighbors, your friends, your family are very familiar today. Hear my heart are very familiar on this April day with the message of the cross. It's been everywhere. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. And we've got a work set out for us. The Easter experience I love what it says in John 3, 16 from the message. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why, so that no one need to be destroyed by believing in him. Anyone, say anyone, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. Then let's build a bridge to what do we do with that. Last week was Easter. We ate the ham. We ate the turkey. We had the company of turkeys. <laughs> People sat around our table who we loved. Many sat around our table who we didn't like. <laughs> they need freedom. You may say that guy needs a personality. No, he needs Jesus. And then the great commandment in Matthew, chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. Trying to trick Jesus, this Pharisee, this expert of the law, says, now what is the most important commandment? And our Jesus answers him and says, love the Lord your God with all your passion, all your prayer, all your intelligence. This is the most important, the first on any list. But there's a second to sit alongside it. Love others as well as you love yourselves. These two commands are pegs. Everything in God's law and the prophets hangs on them. How do you love people? Look at the different translations. Some say friends. Some say neighbors. Some say others. And there's three different categories. We love our friends. 
Our neighbors, eh. <laughs> And others, the jury's out. Whether we like them, whether we have to like them, or whether we just have to endure them, we've got to love them. And I'm going to give you two ingredients that are laying dormant in today's culture. Two ingredients that I'm telling you people are starved for today, people. And you in the South, you've mastered the first. It's kindness. I've never met more kind people in my life. When I came down here, it was way too nice. I'm thinking, these guys don't really like me that much. I'm not that likable. Where I came from, being nice just was being endured. <laughs> being kind was my father letting me live another day in the house. I mean, <laughs> you've mastered kindness. But be careful that culture and COVID and circumstances don't bury that. You see, we haven't practiced being kind. We've been locked up. We can't look at smiling faces and, and sad faces. We have to look at smiling eyes and wounded stares. But God will still help you to discern how you and I can step in and be kind how do we do it? Barry Corey wrote a book called Kindness, Love Kindness. Just like Pastor Tom, his dad, you, Corey, spoke into my life. He's a hero to me. You, Corey, is the district superintendent of the Southern New England District of the Assemblies of God. In the midst of a hateful culture, in the midst of the Northeast, which isn't known to be kind, this guy showcased kindness he'd come up to me look at me he'd kiss me on the cheek only person ever kissed me on the cheek was either the godfather or you Corey. <laughs> and he'd look me in the eyes and he'd say frankie how you doing no really how you doing that's a lost art people he cared about me. He took time in his busy schedule. How many churches? How many pastors? And took time out for a little squirrely kid from Connecticut. And he cared about me and he demonstrated kindness. His son, Corey, grew up with Kristen and her brother and sister and went to camps together. You, Corey, and his wife, Esther, would go to youth camps in the summer and serve in the kitchen. Wow. A servant. Serve in the kitchen. This is the superintendent. This is the archbishop. Honey, this is our pope. <laughs> Serve him in the kitchen. Barry Corey saw his dad get walked on, spit on, ridiculed. And one day, I believe it was in Bangladesh when Barry was over there, he said, Dad, you let people walk all over you. I don't get it. And this is how he responded. I've got to live my life, son, so that strangers and friends, the aching, the lonely family, that they receive me, and through me they see God's inexhaustible love. He built that on the verse, which has become my life verse from Matthew 10, 40, in which it says, whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the Father who sent me. That's Jesus talking to his disciples. He says, whoever receives you, there are needs out there tugging on us. We just need to be willing to step in and receive them no matter how ugly it looks, no matter how broken it seems. Oh, that we would exercise the gift, the talent, the attribute of kindness. Can we resurrect it today? 
Can we ask God to show us where to be kind? Maybe it starts with your wife. Maybe it starts with your husband. Maybe it starts with your kid. Maybe it's your squirrely neighbor. Maybe it's your friend. Just reach out in kindness. Use that ingredient. He goes on that book to talk about it being a firm center with soft edges. We're not asking to be compromised. We know who we are in Christ. We know what he can do for us. We know the power of what it means to live with Christ in his resurrected life. We don't compromise on this book. We hold it true, but we're willing. (laughs) We're willing to have soft edges and live with a receivable spirit. So that my kids and my grandkids and my neighbors and my friends and my enemies and yours too come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. You all have an assignment. It's just around the corner. Do you see it? The second is empathy. What has happened to empathy? We're afraid to even use that term. That's a lost art. I love what Brene Brown says. She says, empathy is simply listening. Wow. Holding space, withholding judgment, emotionally connecting and communicating that incredible message that you are not alone. That's empathy. In their pain, in their hurt, in their circumstance, they're not all alone. I watched a little squirrely kid in the cafeteria sit by himself for a week. And then I saw this other kid. One day, as I'm sitting there eating, Sloppy Joes, my favorite. (laughs) Sloppy Joes, Sloppy, Sloppy Joes. Am I dating myself? You can sing that. They give you those potatoes that are so healthy for you. So I don't take the bread, I say extra potatoes and put the Sloppy Joe on it. And I'm sitting there nursing my sloppy Joe potato mix. And I see this little squirrely kid go over, sit down, didn't say a word. Didn't say a word. Just sat there, opened his lunch. A teacher got up, was going to go move him because it was too close. I'm like, no. No, don't move him. Just leave him there. Just leave him there. Kid sat there, opened his lunch. Took out a Twinkie. Placed it in front of the kid. Began to eat. By the end of that lunch period, that kid smiled like I hadn't seen him smile in three or four weeks. He'd got a new friend. You know why? Because some little turkey got what you and I don't get and stepped into somebody's place and said, You're not alone. You're not alone. When's the last time you gave a Twinkie? You can't buy them in Whole Foods either. (laughs) Kristen and I were up at the beach. We went to Topsail. I said that right, I guess. I've said it wrong for years. So now I just say Surf City. I'm pretty safe with that. We went to Surf City. And I saw this sign of this church this week. And it, the church is called the gathering. So when we think about alignment, my challenge to you, are you aligned with the king? Is Jesus your Lord and Savior? Have you been off on a detour? Have you just been kind of playing church? Have you... Have you just skirted the need that is in front of you? God, help us. Father, forgive me if I've missed it. When I grow up, I want to be like that little squirt that went over and sat next to that kid and exercised kindness and empathy. And I loved their vision. It simply says, loving God, and live in Jesus. Isn't that good? So if we love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, all our passion, and we love others, 
We need to live Jesus. Because you see, people, there's an assignment for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Please see the assignment. It may look different. It may not look the same. It may be one. It may be a thousand. It doesn't make a difference. You've got an assignment. God has a place. There is a need. There will be a nudge. I'm praying God's spirit nudge you. That you see a need, you're nudged by his spirit, and you find your niche in God's marketplace and leave an impact for him. In Ephesians 5.10, the verse says, figure out what will please Christ and then simply do it. The part of that, the beginning of that verse, when, when, when the, pa- the, the, the passage was found in this in, in this whole concept of, of living the light, he opens up by saying, be Im- imitators of God. That's a tough job, people. Imitate God. And what that means, people, is that we become true gospel carriers. Are we willing to be a gospel carrier? Are we willing to take on the attributes of the king? Are we willing simply to just integrate those two ingredients, kindness and empathy, and step out with the power of God's spirit and the anointing of God and imitate him and simply do what he says. You say, I don't know what to do. I've got so many things. I don't know what my niche is. Neither did Jim Comenzo when he shared this with me, what his pastor, Dr. Earl Baldwin, shared from Trinity years ago. Earl Baldwin said this to him, Jim, and Jim said it to me. And I've said it to hundreds and hundreds of young ministers. Whatever God is blessing, pour yourself into it. Just pour yourself into it. Whatever God is blessing, whatever God's blessing you to do, Charles, I'm cheering you on. I'm praying you on. And I want you to pour yourself into it. It may look different than a few years ago. It was 1995. A friend of mine, Phil, calls me up. Kristen remembers the phone call. He met a girl, a Christian girl, and this guy was in recovery, and we were going to start to meet, and he says, Frank, I need you to do me a favor. I'm getting out of my house, and her apartment lease is up, and we're going to buy a house together, and I'm going to move in. She won't move in unless I marry her. I don't have the money to marry her. Can you look in the Bible and find something that says we can shack up together? I said, sure, I'll take a look. Meet me in my office tomorrow. Or Kristen, what are you saying? You see, I was still a young Christian, and, and I'm thinking, this isn't a cardinal sin. It's probably a mortal sin. I'll probably spend, a, if there's a purgatory, I'll spend a little time in purgatory. But I, I, I don't think there's a purgatory, okay? I don't think. I knew I wasn't going to find it. The message wasn't written, so I couldn't even have dug into the message. You know what I mean? I, I mean... Within a couple weeks, I did the wedding ceremony for Patty and Phil. We began to meet on a weekly basis. Patty and Phil have for 25 years have served First Assembly in Torrington as greeters. Their mainstays through transition, they're serving the Lord. And it started with us getting together. He had a Harley. He picked me up on a Harley. Back then I had to wear a white shirt. Remember? White shirt, khakis, socks. I... I was in bondage. I, and, 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 and I'd get on the back of that motorcycle and we'd go to Carbones, get some grinders, come back, eat. And slowly but surely, a couple of his buddies would come. Big Ed showed up. Big Ed wanted his kids in a Christian school. Back in that day, you could barter. And I said, Big Ed, what do we need to do? Big Ed, he did the best he could. He the hardest working guy you ever met. Mowed the lawn, plowed the driveways. Kids were in school. Sacrificed, did everything he could. We began to meet. 
Several guys started showing up, recovering alcoholics, and I never forget the first meeting. We're sitting down, and one of the guys is sitting there, and in, in, in comes the guy with the Bible this big for men's group. Sits down next to one of these guys, and he's got a sleeveless jet, and on the thing, he's got a biker girl, bare chested, <laughs> topless. I'm like, I I'm, can't, shouldn't probably have said that here, huh? But I, I'm sorry. The guy got back up and walked out. We took an offering for a halter top or a fur coat. Whatever we got, we just, we'll do whatever we can. Can you, can you wear short sleeves next week, please? I mean, these guys were rough. That meeting grew. I think it was Monday or Tuesday nights. We had 30, 40 people showing up. I kind of became like a sponsor to many, but a mentor to most. I love those guys. Those guys are my friends. I'm telling you right now, I could call Big Ed right now with a flat tire in Kannapolis. He'd show up from Torrington. Someone was giving me grief. All I got to do is lock myself in a room for a little while. In comes Big Ed. Done. Case closed. There was a meeting. What's that mean? I got 10 minutes? There was a meeting. You know what that means? I got to hustle. There was a meeting at First Assembly in Brookfield. All the men went. We had a guy come from Springfield. We all went. Showed up in the church parking lot, was driving a 15-passenger van when you could drive it. All the guys for, that were in the men's group sat with me. The rest of the guys were there with Harleys. We drove with Harleys to the most conservative church in southern New England. We pulled up. The eyes were this big of everybody. These guys get off the bike, start walking in. I'm holding up the tickets behind them. I got, I got the tickets. They go down and sit in the front row. <laughs> the guy gets up, and his message was, you protect your pastor. Don't you let anything happen to your pastor. Men, you come alongside your pastor. <sighs> we got it. And he started down there praying for all the pastors, had us all come up. And people are going down, slain in the spirit, not boom, 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 boom. The guy gets to me, he looks at me, and he keeps walking. <laughs> all my boys were standing behind him going like this. <laughs> Big Ed has a halfway house. I was on the phone with Big Ed. Last night we were talking. Every morning, about six o'clock, Big Ed sends me a scripture. It was uncomfortable. It was a motley crew. It was a mixed bunch. But God blessed a season. And these men are serving Jesus. What's tugging? Do you see the need? Do you feel the nudge? Are you willing to step out with a new niche? This is what the closing remark says. Look. Look back and thank God. Look forward and trust God. Look around at the needs and just simply be available to serve God and look within people and invite God right now. Are you aligned with the king? Are you online watching this thing and you say, Canada, what's alignment? Is Jesus your Lord and Savior? Have you surrendered every part of who you are to him? Do you love him with all your heart, soul, and mind? If you don't, let me pray with you. If you're in the house and you need Jesus and you need a 
fresh, new alignment with him. Can I see your hand? You want Jesus to be the Lord and Savior and King of your life. Can I see it? If you're that guy or gal in the room and saying, I, I need to be tweaked, I need a little realignment. I need to realign myself with this great commandment and this awesome king. And you need God to do something specific right now. Can I see your hand? You need some realignment. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Surrender every part of who we are to you, Father. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Repeat this with me. Thank you from raising from the dead to conquer sin and death. Thank you that your spirit's available to help me get realigned to a new and a fresh call in Jesus' name. Now, what about an assignment? What about an assignment? I love what Pericles said. What you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. There are needs all around you. Just clean them off. Put them back on. The Spirit's nudging you right now. You're feeling a little, you're feeling like you did when God opened up the jails to you. I'm not qualified. I'm not available. I, 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 I'm available, but I just don't get it. I don't either. But He will empower you to fulfill a niche and a call. Pastor Doug, come. Pray for God's anointing on this crew. Let's stand together. You want that niche. You want that call. You want that assignment, and you receive it. And may God's anointing pour out on us at this time. As we get ready to receive this prayer, I believe that this is just one of those messages. It's one of those kind of lined in the sand messages of God reminding us of our heritage, that this is how our church was founded. And I believe that if you'll ask him, the Lord will bring a group of big heads into your life. And I believe that more souls, I believe that we're getting ready to right. enter into a season where more, more souls are going to be one for Jesus outside of the church than in the church. Do you hear me? I'm not discounting what's going on in here. I'm saying that God is going to begin to multiply that. If you're ready to receive that, would you just lift a hand? Father, I pray that all kinds of religion and religious spirits would be torn down, blown away in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray that you will give us the hearts and the minds and the eyes to see through your eyes and through your Holy Spirit. God, I pray for divine appointments with the next group of big Eds, that unlikely group group that we can begin to love, serve, bless, have conversations with, and I am believing for a season of great soul winning in the marketplace, in neighborhoods, in the schools, in jails, wherever the Spirit of God takes us. Lord, as long as you have us on this earth, we want to live that life in the name of Jesus. Come on, can we just, can we just sing this as our response to the Lord today? I hope the service today made a difference in your life. If you decided to follow Jesus, I would love to know. If you'll text ALIVE to 94000, we have some resources that we would love to give you that will help you as you continue to follow Jesus. To stay connected all throughout the week, check out our app. You can find it on your app store by searching for Multiply Church Family. Thanks for joining us today. I can't wait to see you again.